welcome to Does the Team Think? <laughs> Vic Reeves, the caustic and morose host of the show, and also, paradoxically, the bubbliest fun bucket with the cheekiest and most impudent grin in <laughs> Europe, making me a living contradiction. My CV also boasts dynamic uh, stances around the swimming pool, as well as a collection of flamboyant arm movements reserved for christenings and wakes alike. <laughs> Having stated these facts, may I introduce my four nebulous and unfocused guests, <laughs> beginning with Paul Whitehouse. <laughs> Eco-warrior Paul lives in an igloo made entirely from congealed fat on the banks of the River Avon. It's the River Ooze. It's not, it's the Avon. Oh, right, OK. He dredges I'll the river... I'll check again. I beg your pardon, Sorry. but this is my introduction. Okay. Thank you very much, Paul Whitehouse. You've got it written down. We have to think I, I, this No, time. I'm just thinking. I'm just making it up as I go along. <laughs> Eco-warrior Paul Whitehouse lives in an igloo made entirely from congealed fat on the banks of the River Avon. He dredges the river daily for his food, which includes periwinkles, ancient bark and discarded bicycle clips. <laughs> He travels on an omnicycle, <laughs> pulling a cart full of used rubber, and is of the firm belief, of which I admire, that the moss people will once again inherit the earth. <laughs> My next guest is Roland Riveron. <laughs> now, Roland has been let out of solitary confinement tonight, but, as you can see, has been manacled to a mammoth-style cretinous gorgon jailer. <laughs> this lovable and docile fool was jailed simply for the crime of falling in love with one of Billy Smart's circus horses. <laughs> My next guest is Andy Parsons. Walter Matthau, look-alike Andy, always <laughs> dreamed of becoming a station master's lackey, although his penchant for 19th century stage makeup pushed him in the direction of what you see, what he is, what he is like now. You see. <laughs> After years of dancing the gay Gordons outside the Keswick branch of Tandy, he was spotted by the scoutmaster, who became his constant companion and agent. <laughs> There he sits now, at the side of the stage, with his ever-present jug of Pachin. <laughs> My last guest is Lucy Porter. <laughs> there sits Lucy. Being unable to join us here today due to other commitments, she said she had to watch something on TV but couldn't remember what. <laughs> Lucy sent her electronic robotic mannequin double in her place, built entirely by herself in her greenhouse. <laughs> this speaking automaton is indistinguishable from the real Lucy, even down to the radishes for eyes. <laughs> the first question comes from the, the lady there with the cocked harpoon. <laughs> what's your name and what's your question? Um, my name's Katie. And my question is, what does the team think is the worst or most inappropriate present they've ever been given? What's the worst or most inappropriate present that the team have been given? I had a gift horse once. <laughs> <laughs> brought me presents every day until the terrible day when I looked into its mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a bad day. Paul, I can see that you've had some dealings with, with that presents. sort of thing. I, I can very rarely remember what I'm given. People say, what did you get for Christmas? I don't know. I remember one where I got gold, frankincense and myrrh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a lot of use for the frankincense or the myrrh, but the gold. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I, I could think of a couple of uses. Oh, I've for melted it down. <laughs> <laughs> Roland, how about you? I used to play with a uh, Erica Howard, and name was she. Um, one Christmas, I was about 22, 23, so I used to go home to my parents for Christmas. She gave me um, at Christmas time a, a quite a big parcel thing. It was like that, and she said, "Be careful with it. Just hold it upright." And I was like, "Oh, what's this?" It was like square, and it was quite big. So got home to you know my parents. Hi, I'm back from London. Yeah, good to see you. It's all going well in London. Put the present under the tree. 
and all that. Christmas Day, parents there, I'm there. Oh, and there's this one from Erica. Opened it up, it was 12 eggs and a really fierce porno mag. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> But why the eggs? Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe if you're going to give somebody a porno mag as a present, it's you best... You disguise it as eggs. It's best, you know, laid out as a potential omelette. <laughs> it was the sort of thing that she'd worked it out, and she thought, Roland's going to be completely embarrassed when he opens this in front of his parents. Are your parents vegan? And that was really mm. going to offend them. <laughs> no, then, uh, a golden eagle would be a bad present, wouldn't it, for a mouse? <laughs> I would quite like if it was a stuffed golden eagle, because it could put it outside and go, look what I did to the eagle. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. But Lucy, what, what about you? What? Well, I had, an, I had a similar sort of teenage thing, which was when I was about sort of 15... No, it was actually my 16th birthday, and you know, like, when you're a girl, you're quite sensitive at that age. And my mum's best friend gave me a thigh master. A <laughs> what? <laughs> The thigh master. The thigh master? Is that those vibrating things? <laughs> Who is this person? So, yeah, she gave me What's a thigh What's the thigh master? What does it do? You wrap it, was... it around yourself? <laughs> You're meant to sit with it between your legs and squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of that's an orange, isn't it? Another band that used to go around the butt. But I also, the other thing is that now what I get, because last Christmas my mum and everybody in my family, well, my mum gave me one of those where you open it up and it's a card and it says she's bought you a goat in the Sudan and right. stuff. And then I had, because I, I had that and I had some, some chickens in Mali and stuff. And, you know, it's no various, use, is it? You know, I'm, I'm a major away, player in third they? world farming now, yeah. Have you ever used them? I, I, I might go and visit. Like the thigh master. <laughs> I bet you've never bloody fed them, have you? <laughs> They're struggling over there in Africa. You've not thought about them. You get given a goat and you've done... It's all with it, I'll be back. <laughs> and what happens when their visa runs out? They come back to you, it's like, we're back, I'm sorry, we've done the five years. <laughs> I hate Christmas. What about you, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> I want to develop some lights that flash on, bar humbug. I think that's it. <laughs> Students would buy them, wouldn't they? <laughs> Andy, what about you? Well, ironically, I got a set of lights that said bar humbug. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the second worst present I ever had I once got given, probably about the eighth birthday, a friend of mine from school, he obviously didn't have much money, he gave me, wrapped in a bit of newspaper, a crossword book of which he had done half the puzzles. <laughs> and he thought the fact that he hadn't done half the puzzles made it quite a good book. <laughs> I had some, a boyfriend once gave me an Easter egg, and he, but it was a Quality Street Easter egg, but he'd eaten the Quality Street, but he gave me the egg bit. That's <laughs> nice of him. Oh, I had a girlfriend once who gave me chlamydia. <laughs> Jeez. Well, we'll move on to the next question. I think it was her, anyway. <laughs> and it's from the lady there wearing the creative leotard. <laughs> My name is Rose. My question is, does the team think that more things should be banned? Should more things be banned? Well, now, smoking's been banned in pubs, so why not beer and conversation and crisps? <laughs> then we could all go to the pub and look blankly at each other and stare at each other, and would that be fun? <laughs> Andy? I tend to do that anyway. <laughs> That's what my local pub is all about. I'm not a fan of banning things. Uh, I do think, though, there should be some more things that we have actually tests for. You know, we have, like, a, a driving test, don't we? I think we should also have a walking test, right? <laughs> you know, cos you're walking along, aren't there, and there's somebody walking along in front of you, and they've stopped for no apparent reason. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> Go on and get some more lessons before you come out walking again. <laughs> Or even if they walk a little bit too slowly in front of you, that, you know... I'm, I'm quite happy I'm to be quite to fascistic kill. about this. Yes, yeah. <laughs> what, Anybody I'm actually with what? you on this, yeah. very much so. You know those children now where they have their trousers like boys who have the trousers down really low and they walk like they've pooed themselves a little bit? Well, they have the trousers of... hanging so low. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Lucy, carry on. I'm, I'm intrigued. There's a lot of things about young people. You know the thing where you're on the bus or the train and they're playing their music on their phone, but like not through headphones, where it's just playing at you? And I just think young people should do something like just learn, I don't know, church madrigals or something like that. Because... <laughs> I, I'm not a big fan of the young. No, I'm not really. You know, I'm a bitter old man and I freely admit it and I really hate them. I'm jealous of them <laughs> and that, you know, I can't go to their parties. Uh, I, I want to tell them, go home at 11 o'clock, stop drinking, put the fag out, get up early and go for a swim. And leave it to you. <laughs> yeah, leave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Horse racing I'd ban, I hate it. That's another one I don't like, but there's no reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> other, than, 
I do remember many, you know, afternoon, Saturday afternoon, if it was raining, you couldn't go out and play. You'd have to sit and watch... We well, didn't have to, I suppose, sit and watch Grandstand, but I found myself there hating horse racing. What, what annoys me about horse racing is the way when the Grand National and something like that, they always go, they're jumping for fun. <laughs> and you think, well, if they were jumping for fun, when they'd managed to get rid of the rider, they'd keep on jumping the fences. But normally, don't they? Once they got rid of the rider, comes up to a fence, they think, oh, sod that, round the outside. <laughs> If they were really jumping for fun, they'd jump the first one, think that was brilliant, turn round and jump it all over again. Roland, yes. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm much along the lines of what these guys have been saying. I'd ban kids. <laughs> no, hear me out. I've got three, so I'm allowed to talk at length about this. Not kids' kids, not, you know, small kids, because they're great. But when they get to about 12, 13, 14, ban them. <laughs> It's Sorry, mate. Nodding in agreement. I'm with you there. I went to pick my daughter up from school the other day. She's 14. And as I got there to pick her up, she said, don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> you were accompanied by policemen, though, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was my lawyer. <laughs> Did you not pick her up in the right car? Was that the problem? I've I seen the adverts. You've got to have the right car to I be don't think, cool I, I don't think you could ever have the right car, Andy. No. I don't think you could have the not right... Not for your daughter? Just, nothing. Don't say anything. Don't appear near me, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Was it the billboard that said, I ate kids? <laughs> <Was> that... <laughs> well, upset. Uh, well, well, let's move on now. And the next question is an email question from John Muto. <laughs> from Beryl Bainbridge. And he says... <laughs> he says, uh, how would the team deal with a crashing boar? So you're at a party, <laughs> a cocktail party. What I would do is peel a boiled egg that I'd brought with me... <laughs> And then wink. Do you know what? <laughs> you know, there's a certain scent you, you get from a freshly peeled boiled egg. If I was with... And a wink, <laughs> I think you've done your work. Uh -huh. <laughs> what would you do? Do you know what? If I was with a crashing boar, already there's some interest, cos the guy's crashing. You're in a car with him, he's, you know, boring you sick, but he is crashing. <laughs> Good. Paul, what about you? <laughs> You know, I've lived quite a while now. I've actually realised that I am the crashing ball <laughs> <laughs> often at parties. So, you know, I tend to deal with it myself. I tend to drink a few drinks and go home. What happens if a ball meets another ball? Do you get that? Is there a sort of, you know... Do they double... cancel each other out? Yeah. Yeah. Are you two really interesting people? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lucy, how do you deal with them? Well, I suppose I am quite boring as well. But Because I, I think you have to make your own fun in life, don't you? Because I, I, I live alone and I'm quite boring. Is it weird, right, to dress your cats up and make them have tea parties? Is that... <laughs> Andy, what about you? Do I think what you should do with a crashing boar is turn it into a competition and see how quickly you can get them to be tedious on the next subject. <laughs> and then you can actually have a bit of fun. There is a comic who shall remain nameless who basically, the game is to see how quickly we can get him to talk about himself. Because he quite likes talking about himself. No, is it me? No, no. 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 It, it's, it's funny. It's funny you should want the name, Roland. But... Uh, <laughs> But yes, I think you could have a lot of fun going, right, let's see if we can get him going tedious, because presumably if you are a bit tedious, you, you know, I'm guessing, that you, you, you might try and hold off being tedious straight away, save it, because you enjoy your tedium later on. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next question is an email question, and it comes from Paul Simonon from The Clash. <laughs> <laughs> and he says... Will there ever be a winner in the battle of the sexes? <laughs> well, I don't know who would win that, but I do know who would win a battle between a gorilla and F. Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> and the answer is, the gorilla. No! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was that, was that uh, F. Scott or was that the gorilla? Uh, that was... No. Yeah. So, uh, Lucy, yeah, who would win in the Battle of the Sexes? That, if we were to have a wrestle tonight, I think I could take White House and River on. <laughs> Out for a meal. Mm. <laughs> and then whip your asses, and then I think Parsons would snap my arm like a twig. <laughs> Seem like a bully. <laughs> well, you Go on then, Andy. Bully. Well, in the Battle of the Sexes, I think the earthworm is <laughs> one. Because apparently they are both male and female. Yeah, they do it to themselves. Yeah. Well, Have you not been to Bangkok? Apparently they don't do it to themselves. They take it in turns, one to be the giver and one to be the receiver. So, you know... You... But it's a one person. No, it's no. It's singular. Apparently, you, not with earthworms. You're thinking of the banana slug, Vic. <laughs> 
The banana slug can go, oh, you're looking good today. Yes, I am, aren't I? Fancy a shag? Yes, I do. And he gives himself one. Now, that's a talent, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? What do you want to come back as? A banana slug. I don't know. I seem to have managed all right. <laughs> Roland. I was never aware that there was any war. I've got to say this. Um, yeah. Maybe I've missed something. I don't think there is a war. I don't think. I think it's, it's some terminology that's just been hoiked out from the sixties. You know, when women were burning their bras. Now there's something to ban. <laughs> Brass. <laughs> oh, Paul, have you got anything to say? No, I, I, I don't believe there's a battle of the sexes either. I've, I've never known a woman that thinks I'm boorish, selfish, drunk, sexually inadequate. Or anything <laughs> like that. They all think I'm great. And I think they're great. <laughs> oh, I was dragged down four flights of stairs by a woman once. Oh, it was horrible. Really? Yeah. She's dead now, obviously. <laughs> And the next question comes from Sausage Face down there. <laughs> My name's Rebecca, and I'd like to ask, does a team ever read their horoscope? Does the team ever read their horoscopes? And mine this morning said, beware of four panellists, they are imposters. <laughs> and will offer you a poison chalice. <laughs> Could it be true? Andy, what say you? <laughs> I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not really into my, my horoscopes or, or any sort of uh, fortune telling. The only time I would ever look at the tea leaves in my mug would be when the tea bag had broken. <laughs> <laughs> and what would that prove? That would prove that I had bust a tea bag and the tea leaves were at the bottom of my mug. Quite right. <laughs> Lucy, what about you? I don't really know what to believe. I mean, Roland very kindly offered to tell my fortune, which involves some kind of breast analysis. I'm not quite sure <laughs> how that's going to work. But, uh, yeah, I think it's all bunkum, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Roland. Well, do you know what? Uh, Are you an Aquarian? Uh, I can be for cash, you know that. <laughs> uh, a long time ago, I was having dinner with uh, Alexi and Linda. Alexi, Sal and Linda, lovely couple. And uh, It was a Sunday. We had this thing for a very short time where we'd take it in turns to cook each other Sunday lunch. And they were around at my house. And uh, they were looking through the, uh, the papers. And Linda, very sort of sardonically, I think that's the right word, or is that a dried fruit? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, said, here, Lexi, it says here you're going to go to an ice show and you'll get a flat tyre. <laughs> That was the horoscope for Alexi Sale. Was that specific? Did it come true? No, of course not. <laughs> so we sued, and so that's bunkum, why they're multi As Lucy rightly points out, well, exactly. bunkum. Well, exactly. <laughs> A lot of people do believe in the bunkum, though, don't they? Yes, the, they do. Uh, the year of the pig is uh, currently on, isn't it? And a lot of Chinese people were delaying the births, weren't they? They were lying in bed, hoping they didn't give birth, so as they could have their kid in the year of the lucky pig. <laughs> And you're thinking, why is it that lucky? Because there's just going to be more kids born in that year. The class size will be bigger. They'll learn less, get a shit job. They might have been better going for the year of the goat instead. He's got a point. Paul, what do you say? Well, I don't, you know, want to reignite the battle of the sexes, which has obviously never happened. But I could be wrong here. But isn't it mainly women who read the horoscope? Is this where the metal <laughs> started? You know Sharp and take your breath, everyone, now. Thank you. <laughs> And yeah, as White House's popularity on, drops by 10%, <laughs> we move on to the next does, question. Does that make Mystic Meg a god? <laughs> well, in some people's eyes, she is. My nan swore by the spirit world. I mean, didn't swear. She did. She went to see a, a medium every week. Miss Stone. She's seen Jesus at the bottom. Jesus at the bottom of the bed, standing there like that with his arms outstretched. <laughs> She's, she lived in the bloody spirit world. <laughs> Right, let's move on to the next question, and it comes from lady there with the sandwich board declaring that her shoes are cut price. <laughs> My name's Ian. Uh, does the team think it's fine to give American tourists the wrong directions? <laughs> Is it OK? Well, a good question. Is it OK to give American tourists the wrong directions? I don't know, but I know if you're in New York, it's always good fun to say to a New York taxi driver, can you take me to Texas? <laughs> <laughs> That's just personal. Paul, what about you? Why stop at Americans, you know? Let's have a laugh at the Japanese as well. It's up there, turn left, then... No, I mean... <laughs> You could say to Japanese, like, take a you really have to take a photograph of this over there. 
thing over there. I don't know what it is, but take a picture of it. You can tell English people the wrong directions as well, can't you? Do you not get as much fun out of sending English people the wrong way as Americans? <laughs> That's <laughs> racist. <laughs> if that... you don't know anything about the town you live in, then it's going to come natural to you, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. That's another yeah. point. Yeah. What if you're a stranger in a town and somebody asks you directions? You could then do it without meaning to, couldn't you? Well, yeah. I always have a stab, even though it, well, I'll be somewhere doing a gig and I'll just go... You stab oh, them well. as well. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, it seems the Americans aren't Insult very popular to with the audience, yeah. really. But if I you did... bleed, I will give you the right directions. If you don't, you're a witch. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way we do things in England. I, did, I was doing a gig in Derby recently and there were some American tourists there and it was quite late at night and they came up to me and they were sort of very, like, quite panicked and they said, oh, God, we, you know, we're really lost and we've been trying to look for someone who sort of looks approachable to kind of get directions from and it was because I could understand it because they'd obviously discovered what I've found which is that everyone in Derby does look a little bit sort of like a rapist or something you know? <laughs> <laughs> that puts my women like uh, horoscopes into perspective doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> are you thinking of returning to Derby <laughs> not now no, no never <laughs> no. so you can give whatever directions to anyone but what were Americans doing in Derby <laughs> they were lost <laughs> Andy I'd happen to tell them that Buckingham Palace was in Derby. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's why they were there. I mean, obviously, the audience, when the question was asked, clapped. That's their own opinion of <laughs> sending American tourists the wrong way. And American tourists don't help themselves, do they? Because they only get two weeks' holiday a year, and then they work for 40 years. They've never been outside the country. They've got the fashion sense of 20 years ago. They turn up. They're middle-aged. They haven't got a clue about any other country. Obviously, they shouldn't let one of them run the country at that stage. <laughs> but basically, they say, don't they, all Americans have got no sense of irony. It's not true. What they often don't have, right, is a sense of self-deprecation, isn't it? Because only in Britain would we have a best-selling book entitled Crap Towns, and they have to produce a second book, Crap Towns 2, <laughs> because too many British people had written in complaining that their town hadn't made the first book. <laughs> Valid point. Okay, let's but, also, move on. but also, could I just say, if Americans only get two weeks off, and so an American comes and says, "Excuse me, do you know the way to say it's going to take you about two and a half weeks, mate?" <laughs> oh, I haven't got time. Good point there, Rob. <laughs> the next question is the gentleman there with the Holman Hunt Light of the World tattooed onto his chest <laughs> and face. Uh, my name's Sean. My question is, what's the team's most treasured possession? What is the team's most treasured possession? Mine are my tree-climbing crampons, <laughs> which I use every morning to climb up the top of the, uh, the pine tree to see what's going on in my parish. <laughs> what about you, Lucy? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't really think of anything because I, I, I don't really sort of get into possessions because I had a weird thing when I first moved to London I shared a flat with some heroin users who were, and it's not that like being a heroin user makes you a bad person but it makes you a really bad flatmate because if you live with them um, <laughs> when you live with heroin users these two they're really nice but they used to obviously like a lot of their possessions they'd get rid of and then some of mine because like, you know in a flat normally right <laughs> you know, I wonder where this is leading <laughs> <laughs> you know normally in a flat like you might get annoyed with your flatmates and pin a note to the fridge kind of going to do all my yogurt or something but I came down to the kitchen one morning and there was no fridge at all in this flat and it was so I've kind of learned not the good thing that happened, just quickly, the good thing that happened though was when I was living there my agent phoned up and said oh do you want to be on through the keyhole right and um, the, and I thought they meant on the panel which said no do you want to they want to do your house on through the keyhole and obviously it turned out they'd mix them up with Gail Porter but it was kind of I just thought it'd be really great just the idea of Lloyd Grossman kind of going oh syringes and foil who lives in a house like this kind of thing <laughs> just be, the world said, you live in, Lucy, rapists and drug addicts. <laughs> Paul, tell me about your most treasured uh, position. I don't know, really. I suppose a toss-up. I've got a very nice split cane fishing rod. Position. And I've got some nice children. And I don't know, if I was... You've if got I was nice starving, children that tell you to shut up. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, but I still love them. <laughs> and it, I suppose if I, you know, if I was starving and you know I had to fend for myself, I could catch a fish with a fishing rod, or I could sell my children. I don't know which. Or whip them mercilessly yeah, whip with them your ropes pole. <laughs> but I'm a bit like you. You, me, John Lennon. Imagine no possessions. <laughs> it's, it's critical old bastard. <laughs> Andy, no, my, my favourite say on this? possession is in fact twelve eggs and a really fierce pornographic magazine. <laughs> I have a slight suspicion they're second hand, <laughs> and a couple of the eggs were broken. <laughs> That's why some of the pages stick together. <laughs> my most treasured possession, my virginity. Thank you. <laughs> 
Right, we'll move on to the final question. This is my question, and it is as follows. Does the team think it is possible to grow cress in the brim of one's trilby? <laughs> and if so, on what other garments might I be able to grow veg? <laughs> Roland. Do you know what? I'm not sure about growing vegetables uh, on clothing, but do you know, I've had this idea. If only we could grow vegetables in our stomachs. That way, we wouldn't have to eat them. <laughs> you know, every now and again you hear about these stories where people, um, they eat a tomato, and a bloody great big tomato tree grows in their I've stomach. never heard these stories, tell me more. <laughs> You come to my reading classes, don't you? <laughs> no, there's this thing the about things learning. can grow. Things can grow inside you. And the idea, you know, if you're a woman, a, a child grows for nine months. How long does it take for a carrot to get big enough to eat? But surely you're so if you have a seed within your body... Yeah. That can, so yeah. If, so if I swallowed yeah. a seed, if I implanted a, perhaps a marrow at yes. the base of my... Cervix? <laughs> Wow. There's now there's sort of a thought. Of, you're two veg. You've got to have the meat. So what are you going to You're going to grow a lamb in there as well? I could provide the meat, of my Rom friend. Romley Marsh lambs. <laughs> what about five fruit and veg a day? You'd never get it all in there. <laughs> well, that's true. I'm just saying that you could actually supplement stuff. You could have stuff growing inside you that, you know, every now and again when you want to, your enzymes could just break it down but and it, just enjoy it. It'd only be there for eight hours and then you'd poo out a marrow. <laughs> and that'd be no fun at all, would it? GM. GM's the only way forward. Paul, <laughs> tell me more. Trust I've got you. a trilby. I've got one trilby. Yeah. I've never grown any cress in it. It's a paisley, pink, psychedelic. It's very gay trilby. I bought it in this shop and I thought, I'd, I had to go and do some other stuff. So I left it in the shop, went back to pick it up later. And as I was on my little wandering, I thought, that's a pretty gay hat, really. But I can embarrass my kids with it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Were you wearing the hat when your child said, don't say anything? No. I wish I had been. At least I'd have any. Was crass grown in the, in the <laughs> brim? So Whoa. I go back to pick this hat up thinking, my God, it's very gay, that hat. And I go into the shop and the bloke's standing next to me. And it was Graham Norton. So, and he snapped yeah. all the rest of them up. Yeah, and he was buying one, yes, exactly. So, but then I thought about this and I thought, well, if I'd been in the shop and was buying 10 Bensons and Graham Norton was next to me buying 10 Bensons, I wouldn't have thought, well, these fags are a bit gay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as an actor, obviously, uh, I should grow cress in a fedora. Yeah, you should, of course. <laughs> Lucy, what about you? Have you grown any, uh, perhaps, don't know, turnips in your knickers? <laughs> But I haven't got any hats. The whole thing about growing them in your body, maybe as a woman you could use your womb, you know, to make veg. Really? Instead of babies. Is that possible? I don't know. Well, Let me just write that down. <laughs> womb Je as cabbage patch. Je <laughs> Jesus was the fruit of Mary's womb, so it's... Yeah, you've got a point. Well, it would be... I've been saying yeah. there's tons of stuff. There's, we're, just, we're ignorant to it. I want to grow, grow veg off my clothes. Yeah, I've got okay. gay I've got turnips in my trousers. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Whitehouse there. Um, <laughs> Bring his cab forward Andy, an hour. Andy Parsons, what have you got to say about, on this matter? I reckon that you can grow cress in your hat. I reckon a little felt trilby, get it nice and moist, hold in the moisture, whack on the old mustard seeds, no problems at all. Speaking on the old mustard seeds. I think seeds. you do get a bit of mustard and cress on your hat, then you want to grow a bit of lawn seed all over your suit, right? Nice. Then go down to Hyde Park, lie down, right? <laughs> Wait until somebody has a picnic near you, and then just... <laughs> Give them a bit of a fright. <laughs> and offer them some cress. <laughs> well, thank you for your advice. <laughs> I've enjoyed what I've heard tonight, and I've taken note. And that's the end of Does the Team Think? <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen... Yes, well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've absorbed and digested some of today's claptrap and may find occasion to use said info perhaps to seal a deal or simply to woo a potential lover into your stockroom. <laughs> I know I did. Goodbye. <laughs>